the dream of interstellar travel soon become reality? Experts have been working for some time on concepts that will one day enable us to enter foreign star systems. Until now, the vast expanses of space have always thwarted this ambitious desire. After all, even the Alpha Centauri system, which is only 4.34 light years away, is tens of thousands of travel years away with our current needs. But now, NASA has presented a revolutionary propulsion technology that should get us to the star system of our dreams in just 40 years. But how does the groundbreaking sunbeam drive work? What technical tricks will make the vast distances of the cosmos seem forgotten? And when will the first interstellar research probe leave Earth? Star Wars and the like show how it's done. A few skillful button presses, a distorted starry noise in front of the cockpit window, and the interstellar journey is perfect. In reality, however, a little more patience is needed. Although Voyager 1 has been traveling through space for almost 50 years, covering some 24.81 billion kilometers between itself and the Sun, it has not yet covered a single light day, and it still has a good 40,000 years to go before it reaches the nearest star. Despite its advanced age, the old probe is not chugging through space like a lame snail, but is racing through the vastness of the cosmos at a speed of 61,500 kilometers per hour. But 61,500 kilometers per hour is simply not enough for interstellar travel, which is unfortunate to say the least, since astronomers have now detected several potentially habitable exoplanets in our cosmic neighborhood. The closest of these is called Proxima b, Located just 4.2 light years from us in the constellation Centaurus, it orbits the eponymous red dwarf Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri, together with the double star Alpha Centauri, in turn forms a superordinate triple system, and thus also the literally closest target when it comes to the question of the first interstellar mission in the history of space travel. Unfortunately, however, the current truth is that with our current means, it would take 70,000 to 80,000 years for a space probe to arrive at Proxima Centauri. But what if there were ways and means to dramatically shorten this utopian travel time? If the current top speed of 692,000 kilometers per hour, which the NASA probe, Parker Solar Probe, recently reached, could be increased again to unprecedented heights, could we then enter the Alpha Centauri system in just 40 years? Well, then we would have arrived at the core of the groundbreaking new propulsion technology that NASA has now presented. Named Sunbeam, the basic idea of this concept actually seems quite simple. Instead of giving the spacecraft the fuel for its journey at the start, it is to be supplied with the necessary energy from the outside during its flight. The role of this cosmic long-term filling station is taken on by an external platform that ensures a constant supply of energy via a particle beam. What makes Sunbeam so special is the insane speeds that can be achieved with this method. In this context, even Parker Solar Probe's speed record seems like a leisurely stroll. After all, Sunbeam is supposed to accelerate a 1,000 kilogram research probe to 10% of the speed of light. And while light travels at about 300,000 kilometers per second, the Sunbeam probe would be able to cover around 30,000 kilometers in one second. That's a good 100 million kilometers per hour. But how is something like that even possible? How the Sunbeam drive works and what advantages it offers. According to NASA experts, the key to interstellar travel is called the relativistic electron beam. In this case, we are dealing with electrons that are accelerated to almost the speed of light and thus generate enough power to propel even a full-sized spacecraft over interstellar distances. As already briefly mentioned, this is to be achieved with the help of an external platform, more precisely, with a so-called solar staten, which is stationed near the sun, where it floats in place with the help of radiation pressure and solar magnetic fields. From there, the state it fires the high-energy electron beam at the probe. It transfers momentum, causing the spacecraft to experience constant acceleration without relying on its own fuel. The longer the beam acts on the probe, the greater the speed boost, 
But how is it that the electrons don't eventually disperse into the vastness of the universe? After all, they usually have the property of repelling each other. Fortunately, the so-called pinch effect provides us with a physical loophole based on Einstein's time dilation. In simple terms, this describes the effect that the time of a moving system seems to pass more slowly from the outside. The example of a moving clock that runs slower from the perspective of a stationary observer is often used to illustrate this. Applied to the sunbeam drive, this means nothing more than that time dilation prevents the relativistic electrons from drifting apart and that the particle beam remains focused even over gigantic distances. And if this exciting concept can be realized, the research opportunities it offers will be as limitless as they are overwhelming. For the first time, we would be able to delve into interstellar worlds within a realistic time frame and possibly also answer what is probably the oldest question of all time. Because there is one thing we should not forget. Although the exoplanet Proxima b probably always turns the same side to its host star and is consequently divided into a freezing cold night side and a significantly hotter day side, it still orbits within the habitable zone. This describes how far a planet must be from its central star for water to exist there in a permanently liquid form. And indeed, in the case of Proxima b, it is conceivable that a narrow twilight zone slumbers between the two extreme zones in which the cool wet sloshes merrily along. However, we still lack some fundamental parameters to be able to answer the question of habitability with absolute certainty. But if life on Proxima b has already blossomed, and an interstellar spacecraft provides clear evidence of this, it would be nothing less than the greatest sensation in the history of mankind. But if we now detach ourselves from these exciting mind games and return to reality, we realize that Sunbeam is by no means the only project that has set itself the goal of realizing interstellar travel. And yet, compared to Breakthrough Starshot, it seems significantly larger, and that is meant absolutely literally. Launched almost 10 years ago with the participation of experts such as Stephen Hawking and Freeman Dyson, Breakthrough Starshot is approaching the greatest dream of space travel with the smallest conceivable approach. Namely, with a mini probe the size of a microchip, equipped with a light sail and powered by a laser. Whereby the term laser is not quite correct, because in reality, it would require a gigantic collection of powerful lasers that together form a 100 gigawatt beam and take the sail of the dwarf probe into the crosshairs. By comparison, a single solar stated near the sun seems much more economical, not to mention the advantages of a full-fledged research probe over a flying midget. So when will it happen? When will NASA launch its sunbeam probe and take us to an alien star system for the first time? The Requirements for Realization Well, unfortunately, it will take a few years before the first Sunbeam prototype sees the light of day. After all, we are dealing here with an unprecedented propulsion technology that has to be developed from scratch. And above all, time is of the essence. The first step is to generate the relativistic electron beam that will accelerate the probe. Furthermore, we must then succeed in directing the high-energy beam accurately over interstellar distances, because even the slightest deviation would cause it to miss the spacecraft. To ensure that the beam remains effective over increasing distances, it also requires a steadily increasing amount of energy. And then there is the hurdle of designing the solar stated in such a way that it does not instantly burn up in the vicinity of the sun. So far, so complicated. And yet, a quick comparison with the current state of technology shows that some aspects of the Sunbeam concept have long since made it from the drawing board to reality. After all, with the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, we have already developed a particle accelerator that can generate beams with a higher energy than would even be necessary for Sunbeam. The corresponding beam guidance systems would also benefit us in the vastness of space. And if we then also remember where Parker Solar Probe set its speed record, we realize that there are already space probes that successfully survive close contact with the sun. The thermoelectric generators that researchers want to use to convert the enormous heat near the sun into electricity only exist on paper so far. At present, there is simply no technology that could be used to implement the extraterrestrial solar power plants. 
The necessary technology has yet to be developed, and so it is that even the most optimistic estimates suggest that it will be at least another 20 to 30 years before Sunbeam becomes more than an ambitious idea. The question of financing would also have to be resolved along the way. But despite all this, many experts agree that the age of interstellar travel is coming. And not just in some distant future, but quite possibly within our own lifetime. We can look forward to seeing what developments will be made in the field of extraordinary propulsion technologies in the future, and whether the launch of an interstellar probe will soon be as ordinary as the launch of a new space telescope. But the start of your new subscription is just a click away. Feel free to click the thumbs up and subscribe now to never miss a new video from us again. We'll see you soon.